Oh, do I spell crack right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jess. Get it on the plate. For my chocolate dessert, I get my mold out of the blast chiller. Are they set? Yes. Beautiful. I'm really happy. They're demolding really nicely. I can combine the two halves together and dip it into the hazelnut coating to look like a Ferrero chocolate. Come on, Jessie, you're amazing. I'm going to dip them in also gold leaf. Jessie. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, Jess, you are just too much. I'm feeling really nervous because everyone's done extremely well. I can't believe I was able to make this technical dish in 60 minutes. I'm still really shocked, but really happy that I pushed through today. Oh my God. Crack me open, she says. Tell us what you've done here. So I made my take on a Ferrero Rocher. It's got a bit of punch in the center, so when you crack it open, it should ooze out with passion fruit. Oh, it's like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. The childhood joy in your voice just said, it's like an what egg. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Oh my, she's really, <laughs> gets a wind up, doesn't she? Before I go to town on it, take me through all the elements. The other layer is dark chocolate Tia Maria mousse, a burnt salted caramel, the passion fruit center, which is bitter chocolate soil on the outside, and it's coated in a hazelnut and chocolate crack. And gold leaf. Oh, and then gold leaf on the uh, outside. And a bit of going. dehydrated raspberry. And a bit of raspberry, because, you know, I was wearing red here and on the picture as well. I've got to say, it doesn't taste anything like a Ferrero Rocher. But it is one of the best desserts I've eaten this year. It is so delicate in the inside. That passion fruit as a liquid encased that the coating, the Tia Maria mousse with the caramel is soft and, and just, like, silky. The coating with the nuts around the outside, fantastic. Bitterness in the mousse, beautiful plating. And the whole thing itself, structurally, in 60 minutes? Like, <laughs> you, you, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dessert that I would love to have on my menu. And I'm sure Andy would be exactly the same. Well done. <laughs> I made my nan's sponge cake, passion fruit butter, a vanilla orange cream, and then some macerated strawberries in my favorite wine, rosé. It's all come together so beautifully. The taste of custard. It's got so much flavour, the texture's there, it's got that bounce that you want. I, don't, I swear I don't like cake, <laughs> but I'm liking cake, so... Eating that reminds me of being in Scotland, cup of tea with my grandmother. Like, can you, can you hear it in my throat? I'm going to burst out crying, for Christ's sake. Like, it's... That reminds me of, of going to my grand's house and she'd nip out the back and she'd whip one of them up in 20 minutes like you just did and then bring it out with a big smile on her face and a hug and a cup of tea. Thank you, it's delicious. I loved it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. The first thing I want to get done is the raspberry center. I blitz up some sugar and make my own icing sugar so that it dissolves a little bit quicker and I make the puree with the raspberries. 
I know the judges always look for a surprise, so I can't give them this big white ball with nothing inside. So the Raspberry Center will be found inside that big white ball and also in the chocolate rocks. Once my raspberry puree is ready, I put them into the semi-sphere molds and I put them in the blast freezer so that they can set. And I start to get my yogurt lemon snow mixture ready. There's so much to do. I'm going to have to go faster, otherwise I won't get anything on the plate. Today I'm making a beetroot baba with confit beetroot, crunchy quinoa and pandied fennel. The baba is kind of like a cross between a mousse and a custard. For hot and chin I start by making an anglaise. Once my anglaise is ready, I need to add enough beetroot juice so that you can taste the earthiness of the beetroot, but not so much that it overpowers the whole babla. I'm happy with the flavour, so I pour it into a baking tray and put it in the blast chiller to set. So it's time for me to do my yogurt lemon snow, which binds a lot of my elements on my dish together. So I wanted to just set it in the blast freezer in a flat tray and smash it up and throw it on at the end. I've also decided to make little meringue snow drops. I start to pipe that and I've got them in the oven and they're drying out. Also have little chalk rocks filled with raspberry puree. So I'm gonna melt the chocolate, dip the raspberry in the chocolate and throw that into the sugar for a bit of rock rough. And I put them in the blast freezer so that they can set. I finally have my lemon and yogurt mixture ready for my snowballs, and it looks really good. But I need to find a way to elevate my dish. I'm looking at the ingredients, and the one that strikes me straight away is that rosemary. I love the combination of rosemary and raspberry, but I've actually never tried it together in a dish. I know it's a risk, but I really have to back myself. So I'm just gonna infuse that snowball mixture with as much rosemary as I can, I'm just gonna kick it up a notch. Yeah, I feel good. There's a lot to do, but if I kind of don't lose the plot, I should be able to get everything set in time. I'm popping the moulds out. Spot on. Nice, Charlie. Good job, Charlie. Good job, Charlie. I'm really ecstatic because I've got two halves to work with and they're perfect, and, you know, I think I'm going to get this dish done. Yeah, I'm, like, right on the edge to get this done, so I've got to push really, really hard and um, focus in. To make the casing of the sphere, the chocolate needs to be thin, so it's nice and workable. Come on, Charlie. You know, I pour the chocolate on top. It's starting to kind of creep over the edges, but it's not moving as fast as I'd like. I've got to help it out a little bit, and I grab a palette knife and I start smearing around the sphere just to create a nice, even coating. You know, I want enough chocolate in there where there's a bit of bite in it, but not too much where it doesn't crack open. Three minutes to go! Three minutes! There's only three minutes left to go. I've got to put the yogurt and rosemary snowball together now. I grab them from the blast freezer and I start filling them with the raspberry puree. Oh. As I'm putting the snowballs together, I taste the mixture and all I'm getting is this massive hit of rosemary. It's completely overpowered the other flavors. Ah. No, just stop, Teresa. Settle, slow down, slow down. I have to stop and calm down. I know the rosemary and the raspberry complement each other beautifully, so I'm gonna just add more of the raspberry puree to balance out that intense rosemary flavor. Beautiful. I combine the two snowballs and I roll them in the coconut and get them ready to plate. But I've gotta keep running, I've gotta get my raspberry chocolate balls, my lemon yogurt snow, and my meringue snowdrops ready to plate. On my dish today, I've only got one concern and it's that chocolate. This chocolate really needs to be thin. I want it to crack open nice and easy for the guys. What's the dish? It's a chocolate mousse sphere with a raspberry gel, uh, fresh raspberries, toasted coconut crumb, and a fennel salt. So much is going to depend on the, on the finesse of this dish, I think. This is the moment of truth. I'm just praying that it cracks open. It's open in two perfect halves. What a relief, I'm so happy. 
and a poll of you will be so proud. <laughs> Charlie, I love the mousse. And I love the raspberry and the crumb. It's delicious. Thank you. I think you've come back today bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. You're feeling <laughs> a million bucks. You're going to go, I'm going to nail this thing. And you have. Delicious. See how far have you come, <laughs> Charlie, from that poached pear all those weeks ago to doing something so technically proficient. The mousse is perfect, the, the gel is wonderfully scented and provides a great kind of acidic brightness, true to the flavour of raspberry. I think it's delicious, I think it shows both detail and confidence and that's the way to get back into this competition. Well done. The judges love my dish and I'm actually thinking I've got a, a really good chance to get back into this competition. Next up, Zoe. Really nervous. My future in this competition rests on this one dish. I've made a beetroot bavoir with confit beetroot, puff quinoa, candied fennel, and tempered chocolate. Wow. Mm, nice. I'm pleased you tempered the chocolate. It was flawless, actually. Your Thank technique you. with tempering the chocolate. I like it. I think when you get a good spoonful with all of the elements, the syrup, the beetroot, the chocolate, the bavoir and the quinoa, it's really delicious. I like it, but for me, it needs more chocolate flavour, just to balance it out. But that's the little things. It just goes to show how much you've grown in this competition. Well done. The judges were silly happy with the technique that I've showed today, and Gary loves my dessert. I'm proud of what I put up today. I've got a chocolate mousse dome with raspberries and I've actually got a sponge rail. Beautiful. Gee, there's lots to love on this dish. The crumb is absolutely delicious. And for me, that's what makes this dish. Thank you. Teresa, you're up next. Woo! My name gets called to take my dish up to the judges. I took a massive risk using that rosemary flavour. I am wondering if I've done enough to get myself in the competition. I'm hoping, but I'm not sure. And what have we got here? So I have a yogurt marshmallow snowball with a slight hint of rosemary rolled in coconut. And then I've got yogurt snow and just little chocolates filled with raspberry. Great, isn't it? So why did you create this dish? Uh, I just was thinking about my family back in Canada, winter. So I just thought I'll just make it kind of wintry. Yeah. Oh, my. Mm. 
tell you what, there's some skill in there. Backed up by some really great flavour. Yeah, I really like it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Bjorn like it. I love it. Oh, my God. I think it's fantastic. I really think it's fantastic. I think you've created something that takes us to, you know, Canada and deep winter. I think it's beautiful. And to find that little kind of jammy surprise in the middle, I think that's very, very clever. Wow. I think what I love most about this dish, that flavour of rosemary goes so beautifully with the raspberries. Absolutely love it. Like... Food should make you happy. When you eat it, it should... Um, evoke a memory, it should have texture, it should have flavour. If you're sitting there with your partner, you'd share that and, uh, and, and fall in love. I think I'm floating back to my bench. So I'm gliding back to my bench and I'm doing it very slowly so that I can just enjoy every minute of this happy feeling that I'm feeling right now. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Oh, big, beautiful Chloe. I'm going to cook some in a sticky port syrup and then I'm also going to burn some on the hibachi grill and incorporate that into my burnt fig and toasted almond cream. They look really good, Chloe. Today I really want to push myself and show the judges who I am. This is exactly the kind of food that I want to make and I really hope the judges love the taste. 15 minutes to go and I check on my cake. This cake is the most important element on my dish. My cake needs to be cooked. Oh. Good save, Chloe. Nice job. Oh. Okay, stop shaking. Okay, stop shaking. And my cake is cooked. Yes. I need to keep moving, so I get straight on to making a Swiss meringue. I put my egg whites, sugar and maple syrup into a glass bowl over simmering water until it's all combined and dissolved. Once that's finished, I transfer it straight into a stand mixer and I basically whisk it until it's nice and light and fluffy like a meringue. One minute, one minute to go! One minute, come on! happy with how my meringue looks and I know the rest of my elements are good. I'm just hoping that this flambe in front of the judges works. Come on, right, go, this go, is go, it. Go, go. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it, Chloe. Chloe? What have you cooked? I've done a cinnamon butter cake with a maple meringue, a port syrup with port roasted figs. Lots of fire related yeah, elements, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You pleased? Yeah, I'm really pleased. I think I had a clear vision of what I wanted to do and I just went for it. Come forward, Clay. Do what you have to do. This flambe element is the theatre in my dish. It's my fire element as well, so if it doesn't work, I could be going home. Oh, look at that. Look at it, it's burning. The meringue is toasting and it's going gooey and I'm really excited. This is such a good moment. It's toasting. OK, that's good. Great. Chloe, time for us to taste now. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Wow. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks it? great. I mean, it's exactly the brief. We asked for fire and we got it. Well, let's hope the cake delivers inside those little bubbles of meringue. All right, let's taste.
Oh, my goodness, how delicious is that? Cake, super light, and the fig, a beautiful combination. But the surprising thing for me is how well that, that maple syrup meringue works with the poaching liquid from the figs. That meringue is super airy, super light, a beautiful texture, and it just evaporates. All I need is a cup of coffee, and I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. In this cook, I am so focused. I am spending every extra minute that I possibly can in making sure this is perfect. Cool, calm and collected meals. I am quite nervous about serving up a petit four in a challenge. This is a single bite of food that is going to decide my fate in this competition. Thinking about the three cooks behind me and just how highly skilled they are. But all I can do is my best and if that's not enough, then there's no way I can go further in this competition. Oh, they look good, Millsy. Thanks, Tess. My shoe pastry is in the oven, and now it's time to move on to my hazelnut cream. So I've got my hazelnut praline paste, creme pat and some butter in here, and I'm just whipping it up. It's a mix between a cream and a buttercream. It brings velvety richness to this dessert. I completely stuffed up my shoe pastry in the immunity cook and it's led me to where I am right now. If that shoe pastry is no good, I'm done. I open the oven and... How are they looking? Perfect. It is beautifully risen. They've caramelised beautifully and I just couldn't be more relieved. I start the assembly by filling the shoe pastry with that hazelnut praline paste, hazelnut mousseline, and I pop the little tempered chocolate discs onto my petit fours. There's really no way of knowing if I've kept myself safe today, um, but I love this dessert. I am so proud of what I've made today. I've really done all I can do and I just hope it's enough. Um, so this is a little petit four. It's a Paris breast. It's got a hazelnut praline, a hazelnut praline cream and some tempered chocolate. Well, they look pretty stunning, so I reckon we dig in. Thanks, Milo. Thank Thanks, Milo. Thank you. She was talking about, you know, being more ballsy. There's nothing more ballsy than resting your entire competition on this one little petty four. Better be a hell of a petty four. Hmm. I think the line that came out of Amelia's mouth that resonated with me is, to her, fine dining is the pursuit of perfection. To me, or was that pretty buddy close? <laughs> yeah. The shoe pastry, as light as a cloud. The croquant, which is that crystallised sugar on top of the shoe pastry, gives a, a crispiness that you, you, you can feel it in your brain as, you, as you're chewing the top of that. As far as filling the brief goes, not only is it a great petit four that you would find in a fine dining restaurant, it is textbook perfect as a Paris breast. Just shows obviously the level she's at. That is incredible. It's a few different elements there and she's just got everyone just absolutely perfect. I mean, we just talked about staking your claim on staying in this competition, hanging on one bite, but if it was going to be one bite, that's the bite you want because that was absolutely perfect. Today I'm modernising my mum's apricot chicken. So I've got the apricot sauce bubbling away on the stove and it's reducing nicely. But instead of just the old chicken on the plate, I'm going to make a chicken roulade. For the roulade today, I've bashed out the chicken. It's nice and thin. I've squared it off so it's a nice sort of shape. I lay down three or four pieces of prosciutto on some glad wrap. <laughs> and start rolling it up with some beautiful spices inside. Wrap it around with some glad wrap. Let that set up in the fridge for a, until I'm ready to cook it. I've got a lot of components, a lot of elements, a lot of flavour bombs in this dish. But I'm doing whatever I can to be in that top three. Tess, 
Today I'm pairing my quail with a, a lot of Middle Eastern flavours. I love this combination, cardamom and apricots. Yep. Wonderful combination. I've plumped up some apricots and now I'm going to put them into a cauliflower couscous. But I'm not making your typical couscous. Instead of having the cauliflower as, you know, like a nice light and fluffy couscous, I decide to put it into a pan and just really roast it off. A little bit of oil, salt, and then I can fold through my toasted almonds and a little bit of sumac. Just to, I guess, develop that, that crunchiness and that nuttiness in the cauliflower. This is going to create more depth of flavour in the dish. I just hope the judges love the way that I'm recreating apricot chicken in a Middle Eastern style. <laughs> to plate up this dish, I get a spoonful of the apricot jam, the, the toasted cauliflower, and then quail over the top, and I'm happy with it. I think it's definitely different to what else is out there. So I put this couscous down, and I've got the chicken skin leaning against it all. This dish looks fantastic. I can really see the evolution from the old 70s classic. Right, what's the dish? We've got a couscous there with all sorts of Mediterranean Middle Eastern flavours in it. Apricot puree sharpened up with a raspberry vinaigrette and obviously a chicken roulade wrapped in prosciutto. My mum's apricot chicken, you know, was ringing in my head and I really wanted to improve on that. So, you know, this is a real dedication to her and her apricot chicken, really. Sophistication, that's all that's coming to my mind right now. And the hard work you've put in is now paying off. Hold on to that, man, because that's brilliant food. Thank you, John. It looks beautiful. It looks modern. There's crunch, there's sweetness, there's sourness, there's crispy chicken skin, which makes everything better. The use of raspberry vinegar just to pull back some of the sweetness of the apricot chicken is really clever. And what's weird is You've reinvented apricot chicken using techniques and flavours of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and you managed to combine the 70s apricot chicken with the flavours of the 80s and techniques of the 80s like, like roulade. But that tastes absolutely super fresh. Gee, whatever it is that you've been drinking, I'd like some. Thanks, guys. Okay. I've done the right thing with that vinegar. I've balanced the dish well. Ooh. They say it's rare to win the Mystery Vox Advantage and then go into the top three. But I'm so hopeful that I can get into this top three today. I've done an apricot and carrot puree, roast chicken breast, and an apricot vinaigrette. Love that puree. That combination of carrot and apricot, I think it's such a clever idea. Next up, Matt. Using something like quail and and using those, those Middle Eastern flavours. I've really gone outside the square and I just hope the judges love it. It is a pan seed quail with a apricot brandy and cardamom jam, some charred apricots and toasted cauliflower. Why did you choose quail? Honestly, as soon as apricot chicken popped up, I just went quail. Another poultry. Yeah. Give us the idea of apricot chicken, but yeah. sexy just, it up a bit. Yeah, I didn't even think of chicken. Looks pretty. Looks good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. Geez, you can cook, Matt, that's for sure. That granola-like couscous on the bottom is so yummy and it's just delicious with that apricot puree. I want to go home and cook couscous now. I love that combination of the cardamom and the apricot puree. You've kind of given apricot chicken a sort of, <laughs> a sort of an Indian twist. I think it's very clever. Well done. Thank you. I'm just going to steal that little baby. Less than 10 minutes to go, and I'm in a really good position. My strawberry jelly is set. Is this smooth? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. And now I can pull the panna cotta over the top of the jelly so that when you pop this mold out, it's going to have diced little strawberry pieces, some jelly, and then the panna cotta that's going to sit underneath. 
The hero of my dish is looking great. I'm really happy with it. Come on, Elise. I need something else to give crunch and texture to this dish. So I decided to do a time crumb. Clever girl, clever. I love time in biscuits and everything. So it's just going to lift that time flavor that I have in the panna cotta and just tie it all together. All right, got my crumb, got my panna cotta, got my jelly. I want to show different technique today to get me that position in the semi-finals. Whisk, 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 whisk. What are you making, Elise? A twill. Looking really good, Elise. I'm going to make a black pepper twill. Sugar. And a black pepper praline. Lovely. Beautiful colour. I want to do everything I possibly can to get to number one. Oh, it smells so good. It smells Yum. so good. I get my panna cotta out of the mould and it looks stunning. Push it! I did have a problem with the gelatin, the gold, haven't used it before, but I'm pretty sure that I've done well. It's set and it's wobbling on the plate. You know, everything relies on this. If I can get into the semi-finals, it just means absolutely everything to me. Come on, Elise! Come on, Elise! Make it look amazing! Oh, oh yes! Oh, Elise! Oh, my God! Oh. It looks fantastic. What is it? It's a uh, thyme and vanilla panna cotta with strawberry jelly, a black pepper twill, and caramel. Looks great. I love the fact that we've, we can see specks of black pepper. I love the fact you can see the thyme and the crumb and you push the, the crumb to a good place. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's great. And I like the fact you've called it vanilla and thyme and strawberry, because I, yeah. I think when we're going to taste it, they're going to be the dominant flavours rather than the strawberries. You know, the pleasure for me in it is there are dishes that you, you know, like a chocolate pudding or something, you dive in and you, 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 it's all obvious. Yeah. Actually, when you dive into that, mm. you, you're, you're waiting for a second, then you go pop, a little bit of pepper from that uh, caramel, and you get that pop of thyme, and then you get that very subtle vanilla and strawberry. It's so strange to have a dish that doesn't have the fruit as a hero. And what's so clever about what you've done is it's basically this dish about vanilla and black pepper and thyme. And I think that is delicious. And the strawberry is almost like the seasoning to that. Obviously, strawberry goes so well with thyme, goes so well with black pepper. I love all of that, but the one thing I question is how much gelatin there is in that panna cotta. And this one is quite firmly bound. Okay. Um, but that is the only thing what is a really spectacular dish. Yeah. yeah, and that's the only bit for me that I've got a question mark on. Gelatin. Yeah. I know you love it. And I love it too, yeah? But it's that point where it, yeah. as Matt says, it's just holding together. Yeah. But flavour? Thank Thanks you. <laughs> Look at that beautiful... Oh, oh, so nice, eh? Oh, wow. I'm going to do a beautiful lemongrass from car with smoked lobster, and I'm going to serve it as sort of like a... Like in a teapot with like little teacups, and have the beautiful smoked lobster in there, and you pour it yourself. So smoked lobster and a kind of and a very brilliantly tasting lemongrass broth. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Today's invention test has got a huge advantage, so I really need to push myself and think out of the box. I'm going to put a twist on a home cooking classic. I'm going to make a tofu cheesecake. The tofu actually goes into the cheesecake as part of the filling. I mix the tofu in with my cream cheese and then I add my dark chocolate. I'm hoping the tofu is going to add a real silky smooth texture that you don't get from a normal cheesecake. If tofu doesn't make this cheesecake better than the original, then there's no point doing it at all. Zoe. Your tofu Hello. dreams have come yes. true. Yeah, I just had I really want to know what you're doing because you immediately knew. Yeah. I'm doing a dark chocolate and silken tofu cheesecake. That is inventive. 
you made this before? Never. Uh, have you have you made a, a tofu cheesecake before? Never. Well, the judges are standing sceptical about using the tofu. And, and you got an, an, an ice cream or anything else to go with that? No, I'm not quite sure. Now I'm really worried that the cheesecake is not going to be enough on its own. Good luck. I've already gone out on a limb using tofu, but now I need to come up with something that's going to complement it. My mind's racing to come up with an idea fast, and I think I've got it. I'm making a chilli cherry jelly. I'm going to set the jelly on top of my cheesecake. Yeah, it is unusual. To make the chilli cherry jelly, I put the cherries on in a saucepan with some water and some sugar, and then I add my chillies. I need to be really careful with how much chilli I put into the jelly. Too much, and it'll take away from the whole dessert. Not enough, and it's going to be too sweet. Once my jelly's cooled, I put it on top of my cheesecake and put it in the blast chiller to set. I just hope it sets in time. Right. I've got tofu in my cheesecake and chilli in the topping. I'm really hoping this modern twist really appeals to Maggie. I need to be really inventive today. I'm making a lemongrass tomka soup, but don't think that's quite inventive enough. So I need to go one step further and make lobster brain butter. <laughs> Bit weird, but, you know, this is an invention test. I get the heads of the lobster out of the pan, chop them up into little bits, blitz it in a blender with a heap of butter. Got to pass it off, make sure there's no shell in it. I've never made lobster butter before, so really got my fingers crossed that I've pulled this off. Check on my cheesecake, and I'm praying that it's set. It's set. It looks perfect. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy with the cheesecake. I think it's super inventive. I'm really hoping that that tofu gives the cheesecake that silky texture it needs. I'm so happy to have made the top three, but at the same time, I'm so nervous. This lobster brain butter is pretty out there. All right. What, Harry, what have you cooked? I've done a lemongrass tom car with a smoked lobster. This is a little lobster head butter. Lobster head. Taking a big risk making this. So just hoping that it doesn't backfire. It smells great. <laughs> the squeeze of lime. If you insist. <laughs> You're oh, high maintenance beer. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> if it's an important part of the dish. <laughs> Looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. Really good. Cool. It's really aromatic and it's making my mouth water. Great. Well, the broth is really beautiful. That lime. Mm. Oh, and the butter. That lobster butter. I could eat a whole dish of that. Nothing gives us greater pleasure than to, you know, be kind of scraping the bowl or the plate and trying to find more. The hero is the lemongrass. Regardless of all the other elements in there, that's the one flavour that just seeps through everything else, and that's wonderful, Harry. Great cooking, great cooking. Thank you, Earth. Love it. Every cheesecake is the biggest risk I've taken in the MasterChef kitchen. I'm just hoping Maggie really likes it. Oh, wow. Wow. I've made a dark chocolate and silken tofu cheesecake with a cherry chilli jelly and black sesame praline. Cheesecake, Maggie beer. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a worry. Ma Maggie beer, we know, she, she likes some things quite traditional and yeah. here you are putting up a, a very different approach to cheesecake. What's the ratio of tofu to cream cheese? It's 200 grams of tofu and 150 cream cheese. It's good, isn't it? We'll remember that, won't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. It looks sophisticated too, doesn't it? It looks amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Go on. Go on. OK.
Can I tell you that I think a lot of people might, after eating this, decide that the traditional cheesecake might not be for them. <laughs> <laughs> because the texture of the silken tofu, it is a silky cheesecake. The cherry and the chili, it needs that to have that juxtaposition, otherwise it's too sweet for me. But I think it's um, a really, really lovely dish. So you, you have to know that I'm using every bit of self-control that I have. And I've, we're in, you know, a lustrous company here with Maggie, not to just keep going in there with a spoon and just demolishing it, because it's absolutely beautiful. We do need to stop talking, though, because it's, no. it's calling me. It's, it's going. <laughs> Come on, Thanks, Zoe. Thank you. So how did Maggie there telling me that that was one of the silkiest cheesecakes she's ever had? It's amazing. I can't describe the feeling. Thank you. Let's go, Maddie. My sorbet's been cooling down in the blast chiller. I take that out, add it into the churner. Nice colour, Maddie. I think good, Matt. It's so organised. Now I can move on to the port jellies. I'm thinking of flavours that, that go really well with blackberries. And to me, port dark chocolate would be incredible. Nice, Maddie. Maddie, temper in some chocolate. I don't think Matt even knew what tempered chocolate was when he started the competition. It's pretty cool to see how far he's come. <laughs> Looks good, Matt. That's awesome. It's looking spot on, nice and glossy. Yeah, good work, Matty. Good work, Matty. I'll leave it in the fridge to set. Now I need to move on to my last component. To exercise the aeration technique today, I'm going to be making a nougat. Um, so this is just the base for the nougat. Um, so I've just got to bring it all together. I'm pumped. Yeah, I feel confident. And I'm just going for it now. I'm rapidly running out of time and I can't wait any longer. I have to get these port jellies out of the blast chiller. I gently start to pop one out and it's just set. Oh, yeah. Go, Maddie. I take the chocolate out of the fridge and she's tempered. And I figure, why not? All guns blazing. I'm going to head out to the garden. Go, Matt! Come on, I managed to find some purple sage flowers and a little bit of thyme. I just think that's it's a, a little interesting hit that's it's just going to bring something to this dish. It's a blackberry sorbet with a dark chocolate and port jelly. Is this dish the dish that's going to put you into the semi final? I couldn't think. Of a, of a better dish, you know, to, to be content with, to put up, to give me that opportunity. Great answer. Off you go. Thanks, boys. So what do you reckon on the presentation? Love it. I'm mesmerised and I just <laughs> didn't want him to sit here anymore because I wanted to talk him. Because <laughs> I'm being a little piglet. Great, let's go. It looks really fresh. The colours of the sorbet are so bright, and there's that real sense of fine, rich chocolate. Beautiful. Mm. It's that texture element that we're looking for, isn't it? Yeah. For a minute, I had to sort of remind myself I'm sitting in the MasterChef kitchen and not in some cool restaurant here in Australia enjoying some Top Chef's dessert. Mm. My God, I mean, raspberry thyme and chocolate and meringue, and it's mm. yum. Yeah. Look, the standouts for me, absolutely, the sorbet is just spot on. And I love that port wine jelly. I think it's just delicious, like it really is. And then, of course, you got all that crunch element, the chocolate elements, and those little flecks of thyme that you just, in the first mouthful, I didn't get. Second mouthful, I went pop, and I went nice. Playing with smoke in desserts is such a fun concept, so I'm going to utilise the smoke to take my dessert to the next level. Today, I'm making a smoked chocolate mousse with a smoked salt and macadamia nut ice cream, a chocolate wafer, and a lemon myrtle caramel. My ice cream's churning, my wafers are in the oven, so now I need to work on my chocolate mousse. Using smoke is difficult because different ingredients take on smoke in different ways. You just need to keep on testing it and trying it and trusting your palate. 
Oh, that's so good. Holy shit. I have finished with my two original elements, the smoked chocolate mousse and the cassis sorbet. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. What flavour? Black currant. Oh. But I've only got two elements and it's really not enough. I just need to work out what else I'm going to do and bring this dessert together with some more elements. I'm feeling like this dish is really starting to come together in my head now. Mmm. It just needs something to bring some crunch to the dish as well. And so I'm going to make a black currant meringue shard. Here we go, guys. Hey, Reese. Did you dress the plate oh, to match yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> Tell us about your dish. Um, so I have a smoked chocolate mousse, a smoked salt and macadamia ice cream. I also have a lemon myrtle caramel and a chocolate wafer. What's your little crunchy number on the top there? That's just a cute little chocolate shard, so it's like a meringue. Yeah. <laughs> How does a chocolate How shard get cute? <laughs> when I make it. When you make it. Of you course. <laughs> Reese? Yeah. I love that. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect amount of smoke in the mousse for me. The texture of the mousse was light, it was airy, it was delicious, it was luxurious. What do you think of the cute chocolate wafer? <laughs> Could have been cuter if actually you had doused it in your Davidson plum. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit more of that would have just yeah. accentuated the, the bitterness in the chocolate. But I mean, I'm honestly, I'm nitpicking here because yeah. it was delicious. It would have been beautiful, nice and pink. But yeah. Make it more <laughs> cute, man. <laughs> Super tasty, Reese. Oh. My goodness. Highly considered. And when you believe in yourself, you produce things like this. Yeah. So I think the lesson here is own it a yeah. little bit more because that was lovely. Awesome. Thank you so much. is a smoked chocolate mousse with dark fruit. So we've got blackberry, blackcurrant sorbet and a blackcurrant meringue with Davison plum. How you've arrived at that is, I think at least watching you cook, is that you've focused on what you do know, which is making things delicious. So you've made the delicious chocolate mousse, you've made a perfect textbook meringue. Those berries, you've considered the balance of the acidity of those compared to the chocolate mousse, compared to the meringue. That sorbet is stunning, both in texture and flavour. And here's a new one for me, cassis and finger lime. Who knew that was a thing? It is brilliant. Thank you. I've got mastic, I've got quandons, and I'm gonna use the elderflower, and I'm thinking definitely a dessert, definitely a tart, and definitely an ice cream. Today I'm going to make a quandon tart with a crimbat plus a mastic ice cream. Mastic ice cream 60 minutes is a bit of a risk, but that's what you've got to do in this competition, especially at this point. So um, I haven't made one before, so I'm just risking it. The first thing I need to get onto is my pastry. My pastry needs to be absolutely perfect if I have any chance of getting that immunity pin. I don't have much time to set this pastry, so I'm gonna chuck it into the freezer where it's a whole lot cooler so it'll be able to set quicker. So my pastry is in the freezer and I now need to get onto my ice cream. I blitz up the mastic into a spice grinder and make it to this beautiful fine powder so I can incorporate that into my anglaise. I really want that mastic flavour through my ice cream, but I'm tasting it and it's quite bland. I can, I can taste it just. 
It, it's all right. I might add a little bit more. I can't really taste it. I'm debating how much mastic to put into this ice cream. I haven't worked with it enough to know whether it's going to stay that dull or as I churn it, it's going to really boost the flavour. I'm just going to add a little bit more just to make sure that you can definitely taste that mastic. The flavour will grow on it. OK. Just be careful because yeah. you think, oh, it needs more, it needs more, right. and then you keep adding more and then it grows. And when it cools down, the flavour intensifies. I just hope that it's not going to be too overpowering. I now need to put that into the ice cream machine to churn. Ideally, I'd like it churning for about 30 minutes. Good job, Elise. So I'm just praying that it churns in time. I take my tart shell out of the oven and... Woo! Looks good. It's golden brown and it's crispy, and that's what the judges want, so... I'm pretty happy. My mastic ice cream has set. I now need to get that out of the ice cream machine, do a beautiful quenelle and place that in the blast chiller. It's got this really strong mastic flavour. I didn't expect my ice cream to churn and for it to have that much more flavour. I just hope the judges enjoy it. Walking my dish up to the judges and I'm happy. I'm smiling from ear to ear and I'm thinking I've got a pretty good chance to get into round two. What have you cooked, Elise? Quandon and Krimpat tart with a mastic ice cream. That, that's beautiful. That bright, sort of beautiful condong jam on the top, custard, and that soft pastry, that crumbly pastry is delicious. And I think we can all say we've, none of us have ever tasted the combination of mastic and condong before in our lives. So it's definitely interesting, and you dealt with the mastic the best way, I think, by blending it up with ice and sugar. Now for me, the texture of the ice cream texture of the pastry actually is really good. Texture of the custard, everything actually works really well together. And I think you're brave in terms of what you did earlier, you chose all that ingredients. I think it's good on you. It's about learning. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. To use those ingredients and to create that dish, I'm in with a chance. That's like the best case scenario for me. I have my parfaits in the freezer, the rosemary shortbread on the go, and my rhubarb in the oven. I know that I cook my best when I'm thinking creatively and I use ingredients in different ways. So I'm going to use my beetroot in a caramel. I um, put some sugar and water in a saucepan and bring it up to a nice golden colour, then whisk through some beetroot juice. You're doing beetroot caramel? Yeah. <laughs> Get it perfect, Mims. Come on. The fruits make a big difference to the dish? It has, yeah. I think the rhubarb really made a difference. And you're not going to burn that, are you? No. Because if you burn that, that would be a... I've got a second match. Oh, sorry, Matt. That sounds you right for asking a smart-ass question, doesn't it? <laughs> sorry. Come on, Mimi. Come on, Mimi. Come on, Mimi. My shortbread's looking really good. I'm just cutting it out. I'm going to have the shortbread on the bottom and then the parfait on top. I really want to serve the judges something that they notice and sets me apart from the pack. So I'm going to crisp up a beetroot leaf and make it nice and salty and crunchy. I absolutely love saltiness in desserts. I think it really balances out the sweetness. I really feel like I've accomplished what I set out to do. I'm really happy with the flavours. There's salt in there, there's sweetness and there's a bit of earthiness too. I put up something that I'm proud of today. What did you cook? I cooked a beetroot parfait with rosemary shortbread um, and a beetroot caramel. Is this good enough to get you into the top ten? I really think so. Um, I'm really happy with the dish and I think, yeah, the flavours are there. I've got nothing to say other than I really hope this, this tastes as good as it sounds. It Thank certainly you. looks <laughs> all right. Get out of here. Come on. Thank you. Thanks. I love it.
Yeah, yeah I like it too. I think it looks fun. I think it look, looks incredibly delicious. Yeah. Nice man. Oh. oh. OK, there you go. Oh, there you go. I'm happy now. That looks fantastic. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Look how shiny that is. Is there any more of that syrup up there? Gary, you don't need any more of the syrup. Yes, yes. There's I enough on my plate. Do. I do. Yeah. Come on, pass it down. You tasted the salt and the leaf. It's nice, I huh? It's really clever. Really clever. Mm. 